then certain heard the word. Certain heard the rumors that Jesus was alive. He heard the rumors. I can't believe it, Satan said. It ain't possible. Jesus can't be alive. He can't be alive. I saw him die on the cross. I saw him crucified. Saint Satan was there too. I saw him when he hung his head low. I saw him when they took him off the cross. Saint said, I saw them when they put him in the borrowed tomb. I saw them. He can't be dead. What did his demons say? What did his demons say? Well, Satan, the word out on the street is that Jesus is alive. Satan, Satan told his demons, Satan told his demons, go out and give me some verifiable and undeniable proof that he's dead. Bring me back some proof. But in the meantime, this party's going to go on. So his demons in hell, so went out back to Calvary. They went to the borrowed tomb. And one of the demons pulled out his cell phone, took a picture of the stone rolled away. Then another demon took out his cell phone, went in the borrowed tomb, and took a picture of the empty tomb. Then they rushed back to hell. See Satan? He's alive. She's alive, Satan. He's alive. What do you think Satan said? Uh-oh. We in trouble now. Shut this party down. Shut the party down. Shut the front door. We in trouble now. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. Now that's just my version of what happened <laughs> when Satan found out that Jesus was alive. It's a blessed thing. He's alive. And because he's alive, we can face tomorrow. Because he's alive, we are born of his spirit and we are washed in his blood. Because he's alive, he hears our cry. Because he's alive, we have salvation. Because he's alive, all things are possible. We serve a living God. Let the church say amen. I want to welcome all those who joined us online and in the sanctuary. And before I get started, I want to welcome all those who are visiting us for the first time or for the first time in a long time. Would you please stand? All those who are visiting us for the first time and the first time in a long time. I want to thank everyone for coming. I want to thank all of those online. On behalf of our pastor, Eugene Miller, and his lovely wife, Gwen Miller, we say thank you for visiting with us today on this special and holy day. I have a few announcements, just a few announcements to make and then I'll be out of your way. These announcements are for this week. Missions Bible Study, April the 2nd at 6.30 p.m. On April the 3rd, we have our Bible Study Fellowship. And on April the 6th at 11 a.m., we will be feeding the homeless. Please come out on Friday, April the 5th, to help prepare the bags. On May 1st at 630, we have our summer Bible study begins. Topics from the one-year Bible will be studied. Anyone who like to suggest a topic to study from the one-year Bible should turn in their suggestions to the church secretary by Monday, April the 22nd. Our sick and shut-in Please remember our sick and shut-in during this time. The second annual Regional Two Brotherhood Meeting Workshop, the second regional Second Brotherhood Workshop 
will be held April the 13th at 20, 2024 at 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Zion Baptist Church at 801 Washington Street, Columbia, South Carolina. The word will be brought to you by our one and only Reverend Darren Bradley. Brother Bradley in the house? He will be bringing the word. Anyone interested in attending should see Brother Darwin McLean, president of the Brotherhood. And that will be, he's our associate minister here at Zion Canaan Baptist Church. I have a thank you card. And this thank you is from Tommy J. P. Your dedication to loving, serving, and being a light to a needy world is an inspiration. Thank you for all you do, and may God richly bless you. To Zion Canaan Baptist Church, thank you for all you give, all you have done. May God bless you all. Love always, Tommy P. We certainly want to thank that Tommy P. family. It is now time for our invocation. Would you stand with me, please, and open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28. And we're going to read verses 5 through 7. And it reads, And the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, come, see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell the disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. Let us pray. O oh, precious and gracious Father, we can only say thank you this morning. Thank you, Lord, for your darling son, Jesus the Christ. He didn't have to do it, O oh Lord, but he laid down his life for us. While we were yet in our sins, it was love that he laid down his life. And we can only say thank you, Lord. He is a perfect example of obedience, a perfect example of servitude, a perfect example of love, a perfect example in showing us the way. And we say thank you, O oh Lord. Lord, as we celebrate this holy day, let us continue to be mindful, Lord, that it's all about Jesus. Because if it had not been for him, laying down his life, we would all be bound for hell. But because he did, oh Lord, we are now all bound for glory. And we can only say thank you, Father, for giving us a better outlook. In times of trouble, we can look to Jesus. In times of hardship, we can look to Jesus. In times of bitterness, sadness, heartaches, we can look to Jesus. He is a risen Savior. We serve a living God. And it's all because he chose to lay down his life for us so that we may have life and everlasting life. We give thanks always for all things unto God the Father and in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Happy Resurrection Day, church. How everybody doing? <laughs> all right, all right. And the, and the word says, destroy this temple, and in three days, I'm going to raise it back up again. Ain't, ain't that what the word says? That's what it says. So it's good to see everyone on this Resurrection Day. Um, before the uh, choir uh, prepares songs for praise and worship, uh, there is a special request um, here that we want to go ahead and deliver. Um, I think this is a special birthday. 
Um, and there was a special request put in just in time. Uh, so we want to re honor that because we don't get too many birthdays requests at, on, on this uh, during this season. So it was always good to, uh, you know, someone has that birthday request. It was on their heart and it touched me. So we want to go ahead and give it to them. So um, I'm going to let Brother Sean take over. And um, you guys enjoy. And then soon thereafter, the choir will come and render two selections. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me, and all my days I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. In the darkest night, you are close like no other. I have known you as a father. I have known you as a friend, and I have lived in the goodness of God. Y'all know it. Come on and help me sing. Because all my life, because all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good with every breath. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Because all my life, because all my life, because all my life you have been faithful. All my life, all my life you have been so, so good with every breath. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness, your goodness is running after, is running after me. Cause all my life, cause all my life you have been faithful. All my life, all my life you have been so, so good with every breath, Lord. Let's make one big cry, everybody sing it. Cause all my life you have, all my life, all my life you have been faithful. And all my life, and all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, and I will sing of the goodness of God. And I will sing, and I will sing 
of the goodness of God. And I will sing, and I will sing of the goodness of God. And I will sing, and I will sing of the goodness of God. Sound like somebody know he's been good on this morning. If you know he's been good, lift up a praise on him. He's been so good. Yes, he has. I'm going to tell you how good he's been. This time last week, I was preparing to check out of a hospital. But this week, I'm here giving him praise and singing about the goodness of God and all that he's done for me. God, you've been so good. You've been so good. With every breath that I'm going to sing of your goodness, God. Because all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am made. And I will sing of the goodness of God.
about. When he died, there's no greater love. Come on.
love the Lord. Oh, yeah. I didn't ask you, did you love me? I asked you, did you love the Lord? Oh, no. Thank you, Jesus. So good to be here. And I'm glad that you came this morning. I appreciate your coming. I don't take it lightly because I know you had to pass at least 10, 20 churches before you got here. I want to say thank you. Thank you for being here this morning. Thank you for journeying, getting up out your bed, and making it this far. And we, at this time, we want to give you a Zion Canaan welcome. Why don't you shake somebody's hand? Tell them you're glad. Why don't you shake somebody's hand? And tell them that you love them. And you're glad that you can. get some love this morning. Come with me if you got time. I know you got your ham in the, in the oven. I know your turkey is roasting. But if you got time to walk with me to Matthew the 28th chapter. 
got a little time. Got a little time. Matthew, the 28th chapter. We want to look at one verse. One verse. Well, I'll give you. Let's go to 1, 28, 1, and, and then 28 and 17. Is that all right? So in the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, came Mary and Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. Verse 17 says, and when they say, when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. I want to talk from this subject if you want to keep old Co Country Boy. It will never be the same. It will never be the same. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. We appreciate you. We want to admit that we didn't do it by ourselves. That we didn't make it by ourselves. That we needed you. And so because we need you, because you're the only thing we got, we want to say thank you for waking us up this morning, for starting us on our way. We don't want to pretend like we did it by ourselves, it was you, it was always you, and it will always be you. Now, Father, touch my mind, that my mind might be receptive to the Holy Ghost. Touch my ear that I might hear what the Spirit is saying unto this group of people. Touch my lips that my lips might speak truth, for it is truth that makes men free. Look in my spirit. I repent. I've made some mistakes. I've done some things wrong. I've missed the mark. I've said and done some things I ought not have said and done. So I repent. I repent. But I need you. Holy Spirit, have thine own way. Do what you want to do. Say what you want to say. Move like you want to move. And we'll be sure to give you all the glory, all the praise. And Father God, wherever men and women are ministering this morning, bless them. Bless them everywhere so that I might come into a greater knowledge of who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It will never be the same. I don't know about you, but I've decided to stop lying to myself. COVID-19 affected the church and the world. We might as well give up on it, trying to figure out how we can get back to where we used to be. But the truth of the matter is, you're not going back. Y'all going to pray with me. You might as well get up in your mind, in your heart, that you got, it's not going to be the same anymore. Uh, some folks say they want their churches to be this. They want, I tell them all the time, I say, look at here. The Lord has changed the landscape. And the landscape will never be the same again. Some of you are in this room. You're trying to look back to what happened two years ago and trying to make heads of it. But there is no making heads of it. God has put the whole earth on a collision course between him and, him and us. Begin to look at it, my brother. Begin to understand it. Just like anybody who has gone through trauma, they are never the same. When you go through trauma, your whole idea, your mindset, who you are has changed. Although you may live in the same house, 
and drive the same car, you will never, never, ever be the same. So church world, get your mind ready. Get everything in line because God is doing a new thing throughout the earth. He's changing minds and mindsets and precepts and ideas. He's changing everything, even you and even I. So we must begin to understand. I don't care where you are in this room. I don't care how many Easter services you come to. You must admit to yourself that you are not the same that you were two years and three years ago. God has stopped the program to get his program on track. So the church has to do things differently. We have to say things differently and we have to move differently because God has shook up the church. In our lesson today, we will find out there's three groups of people, the women, the soldiers, and the disciples. And because of what has happened to Jesus, it will never be the same. In, in Matthew, the 28th chapter, it says these two women were moving to see Jesus. And as they were moving to see Jesus, they began to talk. And they began to understand that this world as we know it, our Savior, our Lord, our Messiah is dead. And we're going to do the best we can to do what we have to do. We're going to move to a place where we know he laid. We're going to the scene of the crime. Are oh, you listening to me? Have you ever seen people, you ever seen them crime shows? And the people wait around and say, we're going to the scene of the crime. Or what happened? This is what you got to understand. That sometimes things happen to you and you can't move away from the scene of the crime. In which you, some of you have had heartaches and some of you have disappointments. And some of your minds are wrecked on things that happened 20 years ago. What is the problem? You cannot move from the scene of the crime. Oh, my brothers and sisters, I come to let you know that God has a way of moving you from your, from your pain to your victory. God got a way of taking you from where you used to be to where you ought to be. God got a way of moving things out of the way so you can fulfill what God has for your life. But first of all, most of all, you must receive him because he wants to remove you. He, he went on the cross, but he didn't stay on the cross. Oh, y'all know him. He went to the grave, but he didn't stay in the grave. What is God is trying to tell us? You don't have to stay where you are. You don't have to stay there. You don't have to stay there. You don't have to stay where you are. God wants to move you from higher level to level. He wants to take you from grace to grace. He wants to move you to higher ground. The purpose of resurrection was not for us to stay down. The purpose of resurrection was to bring us up. Some folks want to keep everybody on the ground. But I come to let you know, God came to pick you up, to turn you around, to put your feet on higher ground. Come with me to 1 Corinthians 2. 1 Corinthians 2. First Corinthians 2. And verse 7. It says, it says, I still hear some pages turning back there. Are you there? See, but verse 7 says, says, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden mystery which God ordained before the world unto our glory. He said, before the world began, God had a plan. God had a position. God knew what was going to happen. And because he knew, he made provision for us. Some of you in this room, you are not down. 
You're not downtrodden. I come to let you know that you are not a mistake. That God meant for you to be here. And because God meant for you to be here, he has made provision for you. Your life is not a wreck. Your life is not a mess. Your mind is not a calamity. But God wants to do a supernatural thing on the inside of your life. I'm not talking about Miller life. I'm talking about your life. That God wants to change your life. He said, I knew you would. You see, you've been traveling. You might not know it, but you've been traveling. You've been going through your situations and your circumstances, and you've been traveling. All through time, you've been traveling until you got here this morning. You being here is not a mistake. God saw to it that you would get here this morning. And because you at this point in juncture in your life, I want to let you know that God still got plans for your life. You've been trapped. Everything you've been through has brought you to this point in your life. And because you come to here in your life, God wants to let you know, I still love you. I still appreciate you. I still care for you. And I still got good things. You've been traveling all this time until you got right here. God has got you right here. I don't want to let you know he's come to save you. He's come to turn you around. He's come to put your feet on solid ground. You've been traveling. You've been traveling. You've been traveling. You've went through so much stuff. You've had so many things that you've been through in your life until you got here this morning. And when you got here this morning, I want to let you know that God is still in control. It's just a juncture. It's just a juncture in your life. It's just a point in your life that here you are with us this morning to let you know that God still is in control. He has still got good things in your life. You're going to make, you're going to get up. You're going to get out. You're going to come out of that situation. You're going to come out of that circumstance. I don't care what you've been going through in your life. You've been traveling to get here this morning. And if you would just give your heart to Jesus, he can take you to a higher level. Are you listening to me? He began to say, he said, which none of the princes of this world knew, but had they had known if they would not have crucified the Lord in glory. He said the prince of the world, if he had known that what he was doing was going to turn loose Jesus. He said, if I had only knew, you got to understand, Satan's plan and God's plan are working hand in hand. He said, what you say, Mel? I'm telling you, when Satan, the evil Satan, the more evil Satan gets, get on you, the more you cry out for Jesus. The harder things get, the higher you look. Before you start knowing, you start saying to you, that it must be a better way. It must be a better way. It's got to be a better way than this. And what Satan meant for evil, turned it around for your good. It got hot. I don't know about you, but I've been in some situations where it got hot. Oh, y'all ain't praying with me. I've been in some situations where I got tied up in some stuff. Y'all act like y'all holy in here. I, I, I've been in some things that I couldn't tell nobody with. But I couldn't tell nobody, but. Oh, y'all ain't praying with me. I've been in some messes. Oh, yes. If they had to put people in jail for that, I would be put in jail for that. But you got to understand, Jesus is the one. I cried out. He heard my cry. Well, Satan fixed it up. He pushed it. He prodded it until he got finally the high priest and everybody else. They said, we finally got that Jesus. They didn't know that they was playing into God's plan. They didn't know that they were stepping right directly into God's plan. They didn't know that you being here this morning, because you have been through so much, and you decided to come to church this morning, Satan didn't know that you was going to make a detour. Satan didn't know that you was going to make a detour. Satan thought he had you. 
Oh, y'all ain't praying. Satan thought he had you hemmed up and hemmed in, but you hit that detour. Y'all don't hear me. Have you ever seen detour? You were going on a certain road, and something happened, and you read the sign, and the sign said, you can't go here no more. And the man said, you got to detour and get off the road. And when you got off that road, you start seeing things that you've never seen before. And you start hearing things that you never heard before. And that detour made you think another thought. And the Spirit of God came upon you and he said, there's a better way. There's a better way than this. There's a better avenue. There's a better promise. You got to move from a different direction. And you are here this morning. Oh, you thought you came because mama was going to cook extra dinner. You thought daddy was going to take y'all out the Red Lobster. But really and truly, it's a detour. It's a detour to let you know. You stop, you stop long enough to let you know that God still loves you. He began to say, if Satan had, would have known, if Satan would have known, he would not have did it. Where did Jesus go? In Acts, the second chapter. Where did Jesus go? Acts, the second chapter in the 30th verse. Acts, the second chapter in the 30th verse says, Therefore, being a prophet, knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him, to him that is the, of the fruit of the loins according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on the throne. He seen before and spake the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell. That gives the connotation that when Jesus died upon the cross, his spirit went to hell. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Jesus went to hell? That's what the Bible said. I didn't say it. That's what the Bible said. The Bible says that Jesus went to hell. Why would Jesus go to hell? Jesus went to hell so that you wouldn't. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Jesus went to hell. So that you wouldn't have to. See, you see, my brother, so you got to understand, if you're go, you in this room this morning and you're going to hell, you're going to hell of your own account. You're doing it to yourself. I'm not doing it to you. The preacher can't put you in heaven, and the preacher can't put you in hell. Are you listening to me? The only reason why you're going to hell is because you choose. It's your choice. Jesus went to hell for you, so you wouldn't have to go to hell. You choose whether you go to hell or not. It's in your tongue. Life and death is in the power of your tongue. It's your tongue that decides if I'm going to heaven. It's your tongue that will decide if you're going to hell. Jesus went to hell for you. So if you in hell and you living like hell, that's all on you. Let me go on. That's all on you. That's all on you, baby. Don't you ever say, God sent me to hell. God ain't sent you to hell. When the opportunity comes for you have to give your testimony, he going to check the record and see what you have said. If you have never told him, I want you to enter into my life and change my life, and I'm receiving you as my personal Savior. You see, a no answer is an answer. Oh, y'all ain't praying. A no answer is an answer. He said, I, I ain't said nothing like that, Lord. He said, well, yeah, you had opportunity on Easter Sunday morning to get your heart right with me. And you decided not to give an answer at all. You just got up and you said, I, I came here for the church services and they sung good and all that stuff was good and we had a good time at the church and everything went on well. He said, but 
the situation. Did you accept me? I was young. I had so much vigor. I want to do things my way. But did you accept me? How many times have you come to this church and not accept Jesus? How many Easter Sundays have you made it and did not accept him? So it ain't on him. Oh, I'm, I'm going on about my business. Going on about my business here. I know them ham hocks is balling by now. Them ham hocks is balling by now. Oh, I know them ham hocks is balling. Come to to me, to Revelation, the first chapter. I'll just read it to you because we press for time. Revelation 1 and verse 18. I am he that liveth and was dead. Behold, I am alive forevermore. Then he had the audacity to say amen for his own self. And, having the, and have the keys of hell and death. He went to hell. He went down to the hell because he had to have a conversation who thought with somebody who thought that they were God. Are oh, you listening to me? He had to have a conversation with somebody who thought that they were God. You see, long as you don't accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, Satan is your God. Oh, y'all ain't praying with me. Y'all ain't praying. Satan is your God. And because, you know, once you understand that fact that Satan is your God, that's why you can't say, I, I'm, I'm trying to get out of something, but I just can't get out. I'm trying to stop something, but I just can't stop. Satan won't let you stop. Oh, y'all ain't praying with me. I'm, I'm tired of smoking these blunts. I don't want to smoke these blunts no more, but they keep giving me these blunts, so I keep smoking them. Why come you keep smoking them? Because Satan won't let you stop. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. I like that crown. That crown tastes good. I keep drinking that crown. I drink that crown every weekend. I can't stop drinking that crown. Why come you can't stop? Because Satan won't let you. Oh, y'all don't hear me. I got, to, I got to chase the women. It's just in my blood to do so. I can't help myself. I know you can't help yourself because you don't have a Savior. Once you got a Savior, he will assist you. Y'all don't hear me. He will assist you into coming up and out of whatever circumstance you find yourself in. Why? Why? I need this Savior because he's the only one that can empower me. Well, let me get on down the road. How much time? I can't get out of here because you're dealing with somebody. You're dealing with somebody who can't do nothing for you. You got to deal with somebody who can do something for you. What is his name, Rev? His name is Jesus. He's the only one that can do something for you. He's the only one that can take you in and take you out of your circumstance. He's the only one that can take you to higher ground. He's the only one that can take you to a new level. He's the only one that can get you up and out of your circle. He's the only one that can get you where you need to go. He's the only one. His name is Jesus. Well, they are walking down the road. And as they are walking down the road in Matthew 28 and 1, they began to talk. He said, there was a great earthquake. Now, in order to have an earthquake, you got to understand that the earth has to shift. Oh, you listening to me? And when the earth shift, the tectonic plates up under the earth begin to mount in pressure. And the pressure begins to come up through the earth. And before it can come up, the earth has to quake. I'm coming to let you know that there's some earthquakes coming to your life. Oh, y'all hear me? There's some earthquakes coming. Up. God has got a shift. You look, look at your neighbor and say, God got a shift. Look at your neighbor and say, God got a shift. God got a shift in your life. And when you begin to shift the earth real quick, some of you, up, your ground is shaking right now. You don't really understand what's going on. Your ground is shaking right now. And God got a shift coming to your life. And, you did, and then when the thing opened, when the shift came and the earth did quake, the next thing that happened is the, road, the, the stone. 
the stone rolled away. I come to let you know that God wants to open some doors for your life that maybe you can't get open. God wants to do some things in your life that maybe you can't get through, but God is making a shift. God is moving a shift in your life. And when that shift comes, you see, the, the thing is about the earthquake, you can't see the shift. Are oh, you listening to me? Down there in Elgin, they're they looking everywhere they can because the South Carolina keep getting earthquakes. And they don't quite understand what earthquake because they can't see up under. See, God is shaking things that nobody else can see. Oh, y'all just listen to me. God is moving on things that nobody else can move. There's a shift in your life that's about to happen and about to occur. And you, when, when that shift happens and your door come open, all you can say is, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the shift. I didn't see it coming. I didn't know it was coming, but it did come. And it opened doors for my life that I've never seen before. Husbands and wives with love like they never loved before. Children with obey parents like they never have before. The church will get on track and fulfill its will like it never have before. Why? Because there's a shift under the earth and we don't see it coming. Let me get on to the house and go. When it happened, he said, an earthquake, and the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came with a rod and rolled back the stone. The door sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning. His raiment was like snow. And the fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. These, this is the reaction of people who were trying to hold God back. This is the reaction of people who didn't want Jesus to come up and come out of it. This is what they said, that we need these soldiers just in case he is who he say he is. And on the third day, he was, I don't know about you, but what God can do, can't nobody stop. They had the soldiers there, but what God wanted done in face of the soldiers still got done. You got some people in your life, don't want you to do nothing, don't want you to be nothing, don't want you to go nowhere. But when God, he'll do it in front of you. He'll do it in front of your haters. He'll do it in front of all of them. He'll do it in front of them and say, look at here, this is what God has done. And they couldn't close the door back anyhow. What God got for you is for What God got for you is for you. So it don't make no difference if the soldiers are there or not. The stone still got. They sat there. He said, he said the angels answered and said unto him. Now notice, the angels didn't have nothing to say to the soldiers. They just ain't got nothing to say to the soldiers. But the, those who believe. Those who believe. Do you believe? Action neighbor, do you believe? Oh, y'all ain't praying with me. He ain't had nothing to say to the people who tried to guard the stone and block the blessing. He had everything to say to folk. Y'all ain't praying with me. He said, he said, look at him, he said, he said do you? Look, look at your neighbor, he said, do you believe? Oh, y'all ain't praying with me. And the angel, angel said unto the woman, fear not, ye, that I know that ye seek Jesus. He said, just the mere fact that you're seeking him. If you seek Jesus, Jesus got to respond. Oh, y'all ain't hear me. If you're looking for him, he got to talk to you. If you seek Jesus, 
I'm not, no, don't fool me now. I'm not talking about coming to church. I'm not talking about singing on the choir. I'm not talking about being a deacon. I'm not talking about being a preacher. I want to know, do you seek Jesus? Because see, it, it, it don't matter what your title is. The situation is, do you love the law? If you love the law and you're willing to seek him out, then he can, oh, y'all don't hear me. Y'all, he can communicate. Oh, you listening to me. You got to understand, when you seek him, you can, if you seek him, he will deal with, he will find him. He'll make himself known unto you. When you, oh, y'all ain't praying with me. I got to get on, I got to get on, I got to get on down the road. He said, and the angel answered and said unto the woman, fear not. Ye know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He lets them know where the scene of the crime was. He gives them the idea. He said, the last time you saw him, he was crucified. He said, he is not. He is not. Here, some of us are still trying to find Jesus in our dead places. We're still trying to find him in our dead places. We're still trying to find him at the club. Oh, y'all don't hear me. We're still trying to find him on the street. We're still trying to find him with a lover. But he is not. Some of us still trying to find him in our careers, in our education and our money, but he is not. He is not here. So what? He says, look here, he's not, he's not, but he is. Now, when he says he is risen, you gotta understand what he's talking about. When he gets up, you see, understand, Jesus has the opportunity to, to rise, not because he's Jesus. He don't have the opportunity to rise, not because he's the son of God. That's not why come he can rise. He rose because there was no sin. There was no sin found in him. And because there was no sin, found in him, Satan killed sin, Satan killed Jesus illegally. Are you listening to me? When he killed him illegally and placed him in the grave, God said, I got to do something about this because he's innocent and without sin. Are y'all praying with me? And because he's innocent and without sin, Satan played a high card and lost a high game. Are oh, you listening to me? And then he began to look at it and say, because he is not, he is sin. He has not sinned, and he's clean on every level. He's God and man. He's faced everything. The Bible said God raised him up. He didn't raise up himself. Oh, y'all don't hear me. He didn't raise up himself. He didn't raise up himself because God has been waiting for 40 and two generations to find a man like Jesus. When he found that man like Jesus, God raised him up and gave him eternal life. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, what does that mean? Because, now, it's two ways to go to heaven. It's two ways to go to heaven. The first way is to never sin. That boat didn't sail. That, that boat didn't sail. Oh, y'all ain't praying with me. Y'all act like y'all perfect up in here. The first thing is to never sin. The second thing is to accept Jesus as your Savior. Oh, y'all don't hear me. And since I can't qualify for the first one, oh, y'all don't hear me. Since I can't qualify for the first one, I can't make it on the first one. I got to go for the second one. I got to accept Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. And then what he did, he wipes away all my Ain't you glad? 
<laughs> Ain't you glad you got Jesus? The first one I ain't going to make. I ain't going to make that one. The second one, that's the one I'm going to make. I'm going to accept it as my personal say. After he rose up again, he said, he is risen. He is not here. One of the things that disturbs me about the story of Jesus was he walked on water. And people saw him walk on water. And people knew he walked on water. He raised the dead. People knew that he raised the dead. No doubt about it, no problem. He opened blinded eyes. He healed all manner of diseases. He touched. He delivered. He set free. He cast out demons. But in that 17th verse, at all that he done, at all that he been through, after his death, after his burial, after his resurrection, after he had rose again, verse 17 says, and when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some still died. Oh, my brothers and my sisters. What is it going to take for you? What is it going to take for you? What else does he have to do? And all that he's been through, he came, he bled, he died, he suffered. He was crucified. He went in the grave. He rose again. And you still sit here and don't want to receive him. What else? What else must he do? He woke you up this morning. He started you on your way. He gave you a right mind. He put food on your table. He put clothes on your back. He put you in a new arena. You are here breathing today because of him. What else? What else must he do? What else do you have to want? What else is it going to take for you now? He did it all. He can't do no more. The Bible says he went on to heaven and sat on the right hand of the Father. You got to understand from a theological point, when somebody like Jesus sits on the right hand of the Father, what is he saying? I'm finished. Jesus has said to all of us, I'm finished. I done done everything I can do for you. I don't know what else I can do for you. The disciples sat in the middle of the presence of Jesus and doubted him. What else? Look at your neighbor and say, what else you got to do? So if you choose hell, it's your choice. If you choose heaven, that's your choice. But he can't do no more. He's done everything he could. He's done everything he could. What else? What else you want? Let us all stand. Because Jesus came into the world, the world will never be the same. Everything has changed. 
I must tell you the end of the story. I will, I will be there because I've accepted him as my personal savior. But I must tell you the end of the story. If you finish reading, he's coming back again. He's coming back again. He's coming back again. And when you meet him, there's going to be some questions you're going to have to answer. The question's going to be, did you accept me? You remember that time I brought you down to Zion, Cana? And the old country people asked you, do you know Jesus? He also told you that a no answer is an answer. Do you accept him as your personal savior? Come, as the old folks used to say, come while you still have time. While the blood is still running warm in your vein. Will you come? I'm not asking you to accept sign Canaan. I'm not asking, asking you to, to accept the preacher or the pastor. I'm not asking you to accept the deacons. I'm asking you to accept Jesus. That's what I'm after. Will you accept Jesus? Why? Because he's the only one that can do something for you. He's the only one that can bring you up and out of the situation. He can only one that can turn your life around. His name is Jesus. He said, I'm a backslider. It's, okay. it's all right. God said he married to the backslider. He said, the backslider is my woman. She can come back home anytime she wants to. Come on back to Jesus. Come on back to Jesus. The one who died for you. My blood don't mean nothing. But his blood means everything. The one who died for you. Will you accept Jesus Christ this morning? Every head bow, every eye closed. If there be somebody in this room who want to accept Jesus Christ as their personal sin, just raise your hands where you are. We got one. We got two. We got three. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. If you ain't accepting Jesus as your person, say, why don't you come on down? Join the deacons in front of you. Will there be another one? Come on down and accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. We'll go through the prayer right here, right now. Don't be ashamed. He won't be ashamed before you. Why don't you come? Will there be some more who want to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? It's all right if you want to get out in the parking lot and say, I want to talk to the counselors. They'll meet you out in the parking lot to make sure that you want to be saved, you want to be born again. But there'll be another one. Just repeat this simple prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I open my heart unto you this morning. And I'm asking you to come in. Come into my heart. I repent of all of my sin. I ask you to come in, change my life, rearrange my life, that I might fulfill the will and purposes of God. And if you repeat that, that simple prayer, if you don't remember nothing else, the Bible lets us know that whosoever shall call upon in the name of the Lord shall be saved. All you got to say is, Lord Jesus, I want to be saved. And he'll immediately run to your rescue and turn your life around. In Jesus' name. If you're here this morning, you want to come to the altar for prayer. The altar is open. The altar is open. After you accept Jesus, 
I can guarantee you some things. One of the things I can guarantee you, your life will never be the same. I can guarantee that. That once you accept him as your Lord, your life will never, ever be the same. You'll never walk alone again. You see, you gotta understand. Satan will come and Satan will go. But God said, I'll be with you forever, even until the end. Oh, y'all don't pray with me. It's not between me and you. It never was. It's between you and God. It's always been between you and God. And it always will be between you and God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And those of you who, who raise your hand, don't feel bad. God still loves you. He knew you was going to be here. Amen. When you get ready, then you do what you got to do. Amen. But let me, let me pre-warn you. Today is the day. The hour is right now. Accept it. Keep walking. And don't look back. Are we here? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, here we are. On this Easter Sunday morning. And we're calling upon your name. We're admitting that we don't have it all together. And we need a Savior. His name is Jesus. And we want to say, Lord Jesus, we're turning our situation and our circumstance over to you. Help me. Help us. Help my family. Help my children. Help whatever I need that you might move in a supernatural way in us and on us and through us. Help us open our eyes that we might see you in work, that we might see you in action, that we might know that you are working everything out on our behalf. Oh, Father, I pray for everyone that came to the altar this morning. Whatever they're going through, whatever they're seeing, whatever they're feeling, touch heal, deliver. Satan, I rebuke you now in the name of Jesus. Get your hands off God's people. Get them off their mind, off their spirit. I rebuke you right now. You have no place in this place so that we might walk forward and do what you have called us to do. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Amen. Oh. Amen. I think I got you in time to get the crock pot. Crock pot back in place. Before we go, amen. Uh, oh, faith. Is faith still here? Faith gone? Oh, man. She had, a, she, had a, she had a speech this morning, and she didn't get a chance to say her speech because she got here a little late and the service was on. So I want her to say her speech. Maybe next Sunday we'll try him again. Amen. Amen. Man, praise the Lord, everybody. He had risen. Isn't that a good thing? Come on, let's get God hand that praise. Uh, Pastor Miller, if you don't mind, come down to the front, please. As you all know, uh, this is the last Sunday of this month, 
and we had been celebrating his first anniversary this entire month. Come on, let's get, give God that prayer. <laughs> And let me say this, it's, it's not too late to drop a little love offering in the gift box. Amen? So, Pastor Miller, on behalf of the entire Zion County Church family, so we want to say congratulations, first of all, on your first anniversary. Uh, come on, y'all. Come on. Come on. Amen. And, and, and there's no, no doubt in, in my mind, if we continue to seek God's face, this will be one of many anniversaries. Isn't that right? Amen. So, sir, on behalf of the entire church, chat, you know, the family, uh, we just want to give this small toast. Still have some room left in here, y'all. <laughs> Amen. So, sir, we want to tell you thank you. Appreciate you. God bless. I want to, you know, I've been in ministry for 40 something years, you know. Um, and I always have sat up under ministers and everything and been through a lot of stuff. So I always said, if God ever blessed me, the pastor, I'm going to do everything in my power to do right by the people. <laughs> to do right by what God has called me to do. So, I don't need much fanfare. Never have. Never will. What I want from my church family is to seek God. <laughs> seek Him. I don't need a big crowd behind me. I need a big crowd behind Jesus. And if we can get a big crowd behind Jesus, even if I fall down, you keep on moving. Because you're not following me. You're following Jesus. Every father ought to want his son to follow Jesus. Every daughter ought to want Every mother ought to want their daughters to follow Jesus. Because soon I'll be sleeping in my grave. And what you going to do then? Follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. Get into the word of God. Pray and study. Get to know him. And follow Jesus. So even if it don't make no difference who go off the scene. Jesus is in control. Let us all rise. Let us get on to the house. I want to say something to somebody in here. You're not in this alone. I don't know who I'm speaking to. I just feel compelled by the Spirit of God to let you know that you're not in this alone. And if you let Jesus take control of your life, you'll get to the destination of what you intended for you to be. Let us pray. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Ghost, rest, rule, and abide with you forever. And Father God, we pray for the offering. We thank you right now that the people of Zion, Canaan, have more than enough. More than enough. We are not looking at the numbers in the bank account. 
We are standing with you, Jesus. And because we have Jesus, we have more than enough to fulfill what God has for you in your personal life and the church as a whole. Now may the grace of God, sweet communion of the Holy Ghost, rest, rule, and abide with you forever. And all the people of God who know God, who love God, say,